Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my collection of beautiful rocks and minerals, which I have prospected from across the United States and other countries, type in on YouTube, Rock and Mineral Identification, followed by my name, Frank Riser, space capital M period, capital S period. Riser is spelled R-E-I-S-E-R. I encourage you to watch my videos on geology and rock and mineral prospecting and get out there into the field yourself and prospect for those beautiful rocks and minerals. You can support my channel on Patreon. On Patreon, simply type in my name, Frank Riser, M period, S period, and I appreciate your financial support. Your contributions allow me to buy more materials to bring you fascinating science demonstrations. I currently only have three Patreons, and I have over 10,000 subscribers. If you're, not, if you're not a Patreon donor, I ask you to please help me out so that I may buy more materials. The more materials that I am able to buy, the more frequently I will be able to bring you science videos. Today's demonstration is on biology and physics. We're going to be looking at how a potato can act like a battery. Now a potato by itself is not a battery. You have to insert into the potato two different metals, different types of metals, and I'm using one copper and one zinc, which produces an electrolyte. The, batter, the potato acts like an electrolyte and causes the cations from one electrode to flow over to the anion, the pieces of metal, of the other. When that flow of electrons occurs through the electrolyte of the potato, it turns into a battery. Let's get to the demonstration. I have a potato. I'm going to insert one rod of zinc into it like so, three centimeters deep, and another copper one, three centimeters deep and separated from the first by two centimeters. Now this potato is a battery. Don't believe me? Well, let me show you for yourself. I'm going to hook up two, three potatoes in series. I do this by hooking up a green alligator clip lead to the zinc. This is the copper and that's the zinc. Now between the next copper and zinc, I'll hook up a red wire. Copper of the first potato to the zinc of the next. And finally, I do the same again with the green lead. Copper with the red wire. And the zinc with the green wire. They are acting as a battery, a voltage and current pr producer. Power is equal to voltage times current, so these batteries, the potatoes, are putting out power.
electrical power. Let's see for ourselves if, if what I'm saying is true. If a battery can act. out of potatoes the way I say It takes some time to hook this up, but I'll do it.
I hooked up the wires. I have a multimeter and I set it at 20 volts. I turn on the meter. It displays zero. Almost zero point zero five. It's displaying zero. Now I hook up the copper's red lead of the third potato to the red lead of the battery. And the zinc to the black lead of the battery, which goes to common. And what do we see? We see a potential of 2.75 volts. It's acting like a battery. Let's check the current. I have it set to 200 microamps and we're displaying 5.392920. It's going down because the electrolytes are conducting cations and anions apart from each other and collecting on the electrodes inserted into the potatoes and depleting the potato of its carrying ability of electrons. But I showed you the current. Let's see what else these potato batteries can do. I have a light emitting diode. I'm going to hook up the copper of one potato to the cathode of the diode or positive side and the anode to the negative zinc of the third battery. And it lights up. I have a piezoelectric transducer which acts as a buzzer. It makes a buzzing sound when hooked up against a pot electrical potential. I'm hooking up the wires now. Let's see if we can hear the piezoelectric transducer buzz. And you can hear it buzz. Now these batteries, the potatoes, will drop in power. They'll drop in voltage potential and current as a dielectric or the electrolyte dries up and is unable to conduct any more electrons from the positive electrode to the negative electrode. And no longer will the piezoelectric transducer or LED be able to light up and buzz. This is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals, always reminding you, if you want to find those beautiful rocks and minerals, you only have to do one thing, and that is to keep looking down.